Route of the Shun Pike is it kind of curved around. We went over over land. Uh, the Route of the Shun Pike. The road used to hug the old road a little bit better than it does now. In fact, when they they clear cut this and logged it and so on, I think they created new roads. So I wasn't exactly sure where all those roads went. It's been 15 years since I've been back in here. Um, actually, where where we were. So what? So I hugged the way that that I knew coming. Um, when we go back, of course, we can follow the road. It'll be a little bit easier and see where it comes out if you want to. But we followed the basic route that comes down this column of this uh, this branch of the, the little pond here. It's called Overshot Pond. And uh, right on the, uh, the, the Y here of the pond, that high ground that it was extended all the way out into the pond, there was a mill called Overshot Mill. And um, if uh, you've got... Uh, I think my park history book, I've got a picture of it in there. And then I think the Rethinking Shallow book, I, I put a different a different picture of it in there. But you can see the old mill and of course the overshot um, water flume, you know, is, is um, where it gets its name. So the, the mill would have sat on the, the high ground as it comes out, probably midway of the pond right there. And the road would have continued on down. Of course, this berm, this, this dam would not have been here and that would have led into the valley uh, across. Now the wood line that you see right across the field there is Snake Creek. So Wallace would have continued on past Overshot Mill and crossed Snake Creek probably somewhere right about, do you see where the little little spurt of woods here between the two fields is, extends kind of this direction, mm -hmm. uh, and then tees into the, the major wood line where you see the white cotton on the other side. Uh, probably about where those two wood lines meet, perpendicular there, is somewhere in the area where Wallace would have crossed. Now bear in mind, it's very difficult again to figure out all of this, um, simply because, number one, uh, you know, you can't pinpoint that good even with the, the detailed maps, but number two, Snake Creek has been channeled out. You go down to Snake Creek, we can if y'all want to, but I don't really see any. I mean, we got other things better I think y'all would be more interested to see uh, because uh, Snake Creek, where it is now, may not have been where it was then because it's been channeled out by the Corps of Engineers uh, to, to decrease flooding and, and all of that. So it's, it's relatively straighter um, than, uh, than it was then. But somewhere in that general area is where Wallace would have crossed. There is some debate over whether there was actually a bridge there or just a ford. Um, and we don't know. We're going to cross Snake Creek um, in just a little bit. We, we can't get across there, of course, with a vehicle. So what we're going to do, we're going to go back to uh, the vehicles and go back through Adamsville and down 117, which is farther to the, to the front out here. We're actually going to cross Snake Creek. When we go out of Adamsville, we'll go down in a long, deep, deep uh, valley, this valley. And yeah. And we will cross Snake Creek, so be watching, and you'll you'll see where we cross Snake Creek, and then we'll stop on the other side. Uh, it's you can determine a little bit of where the old road was because on the other side of Snake Creek, you get another one of these where you got you know the old road bed uh, that is very definable. So so just right in here, and you can't really see it, but kind of tucked up against um, the other wood line over where you see the white over there. Uh, is the old road bed. You can still walk it. It's on private property and I think the folks that had it 15 years ago when we did this um, or 10 or 11 or 12, whatever it was, um, they don't have it anymore and I didn't trace down every single landowner, uh, but I'll show you where that was. We'll get a good vantage point. In fact, we'll pull off a 117 out in this other white field over here probably um, and, uh, and we'll, we'll get a good vantage point of this, this whole valley here. And I'll show you, this is where we were over at Overshot Pond and all that, and where the road uh, continues on. So Wallace would have continued here, going south toward the battlefield on the Shun Pike. When he countermarches, of course, he's going to come right back, cross Snake Creek again, come right back over by Overshot Mill, up to that crossover road where it branches off, and over then to the river road. <clears throat> Any questions here? Anything? Yes, so sir. in 2005, how did you duplicate the walk? How do we duplicate it? What do you, what do you, you mean? You, you did the walk for what? Well, we did, we did it. We went you, across it. You, right through here? Yeah. Okay. We went across this field. Um, and in fact, that was in October, and they were picking cotton then <clears throat> as well. Okay. Um, this year's a late year. It's, it's November, and I yeah. don't ever remember them picking cotton this late. It's so but, wet. Uh, it's been wet and, and so on. 
But anyway, yeah, uh, at that point, I think it was 20 or 30 different landowners that I had to get permission from and all that to, okay. to get on their land. And that's that's one of the reasons, you know, you talk about doing this with this group and, um, you know, the logistical aspects, I'd have to go back to all those landowners again and, and so on. And, and so we just kind of did a, a muted version of it here. But yeah, when we did that, we, right. we went across and okay. went up the old road bed and we, we, when we got out of the vehicles, in fact, we had park folks in the park van drop us off at Stony Lonesome up there where, where we turned off Highway 64. And uh, we were on foot till we got across at Shiloh National Military Park, across the Snake Creek Bridge there, uh, where we'll be this afternoon. So okay. we, we absolutely You said that whole thing was 16.8 miles yeah. from being dropped off yeah. to counter marching yourself. And getting all it seems like it'd be farther than that. See? No, it's, it's, it's what it was. And yeah, I mean, we we marched right through here, and then we marched right back. You know, we we turned around where he did and marched right back here and to the crossover road. And over. Okay. All right, did you have a question? Yes. So that spring that's up there, it flowed. The stream kept on going. Somewhere in here, and it's underground now. If you uh, if we went down there, you would see a big, huge culvert um, sticking out of the side of the bank there. That, uh, drains all of this water from here, and I'm not sure of course, the spillway right here. Um, uh, what the level of the water has to get to and all that to, to drain it out, but it it goes underground basically. Probably over that's a that's actually a little ditch over there too. So they straighten that and it goes out there. This is called. It's still on the shunt pipe. No, 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 just the body of water. Oh, that I don't know. Okay, didn't have a well, I mean, it probably did, but I don't know. Not, I don't know. We don't have a Is there still a spring back there? As far as I know, is what old timers tell me, um, but it's underwater now. And that's what ran the mill. Right, right. Not from my mind. It, it was still around in the 1890s uh, when those pictures were taken. I, I don't know. Maybe that. Way. You got any schools here? That's the project for you. <laughs> she came here last summer. So it was so dry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That short tree line that comes out from the, from the other trees is that kind of where the creek bed was drawn. I could have. I, it's very, again, very difficult to to pinpoint exactly. Hmm. Would this have been a cotton field back then too? Uh, I would guess so. Any any land like this would have been used. I would, would guess. Like a delta. Yeah. Eleven o'clock, whatever. Uh, to join them, or earlier actually, to join them at Stony Lawson. So they're still in Adamsville around two o'clock when they finally get word. Okay, there's some mix up and something about mules trying to get their mules together, and you know mules and all that. Um, so they don't go to Stony Lonesome and down the Shun Pike. They go down what's called today Old Shallow Road that we came up to Adamsville on, and that we're going to go back. That's the route that we'll go back to the crossover road on. Um, and and uh, so they'll march down, join the column, basically at Overshot Mill where we were, uh, while the column continues to to move on here. Now that's where we've been. Where we're going now? We're going to go back on uh, 117 here. And, uh, and go south, we're not on the actual route. Again, the actual route is to my left over here, but we will pick it up. There will be a road. In fact, what I'll do, I don't think we need, it's a dead end road, just goes right up to the top of the hill. Uh, there's no need in us driving in there and turning around and coming right back down. Uh, but what I'll do, I'll slow down and kind of wave my arm out the window or something and, and you'll be able to see uh, where that road comes in and it'll say dead end and all that. That is where the road would have come into the historic route that we will be back on then. Makes a 90 degree turn there. Why? I don't know. If you look at old maps and so on, a lot of times they'll they'll just make a 90 degree turn. What they're doing, they're following the ridges, of course, um, and trying to stay out of the low ground. Of course, you can't stay out of all the low ground. Uh, but if um, between here and there, if you look off to the left in some of the more open areas, and it's grown up again a whole lot since uh, since we did this back in 2005. But uh, you can you can see kind of the far wood line and where that old road I was talking about um, west of Snake Creek is. So we'll do that. We will uh, we'll join the historic road, uh, the Shun Pike, where it comes off that hill and and makes that 90 degree turn where I stop and wave my arm. Um, then we will follow it uh, along the main highway. It'll basically follow the highway then across the next major creek will cross is Graham Creek. 
uh, and then we'll go up the hill, and then we're going to veer off to the left on a on a little a little gravel road. It's gravel or maybe some kind of a little hard surface or something, uh, and it just makes a loop, uh, and it will continue on down to Smith's plantation. But we can't go through the woods there. The garrison place there has. Uh, um, uh, the old road bed is still there, and I think you'll be able to see it. And there's actually, they tell me, a, a log cabin back in there that was here during then. Do you know the garrisons? And, and, and yeah, it's got bullet holes in it. Uh, yeah. Got bullet holes in it from. Not the angry you, you husband. No, they're, I mean, there wasn't any fighting out here. Where are there bullet holes in it? Well, they, they say this for some, it was there during the war. Yeah. And. Well, I mean, when I hear it's got bullet holes in it, I yeah. immediately think, I'll have to sure it does, you know. But I'm, I'm not questioning you, but. Uh, <laughs> 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 the kids were hiding them, young boys. Some of the soldiers came trying to recruit them. Or oh, really? Okay. Yeah. I ain't heard that, that story, but. Uh, I'll get that Okay. Anyway, uh, well, instead of going straight on that loop, we're going to take a 90 degree turn, go back to the right, and go back out on the highway and, and go down. And then we'll go to Smith's where we, we actually turn around. That'll be our, our next stop. Um, so, uh, just another view of the Snake Creek bottom. That is Snake Creek, of course, that wood line that, uh, that we just saw. Uh, actually, yeah, that is probably the wood line. Yeah, that is that big tree that you see, that big pretty tree. Uh, what we were looking at in the fields that I thought was white was on the other side, actually. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we are, we are right. Uh, the road would have come right along that, that wood line that will tee into uh, the Snake Creek wood line here. And that big pretty tree and then that little stubbly stuff, you, it would have come right up right up there. And uh, just would have entered the woods, what will be the woods now around this, this bend there. So anyway, general general area to give what you has a, been cultivated idea. like this with cotton? Uh, that was a question earlier. I don't know. I would guess so because okay. fertile land like this would have been... Okay, utilized um, to what extent I don't know of course this is in early April and you don't plant your cotton this early no, even back then you plant it earlier then than you do now but um, it normally would be a dry too. field but because of the rain was probably exactly. incredibly bad right right which, all right any which, questions here which one is the pretty tree there I, I haven't <laughs> quite <laughs> the, the pretty tree you don't see the, the pretty tree, tree. Yeah. No, no, like three trees oh, okay, okay, all right. <laughs> which, which one's the Hamburg tree? Hamburg tree. Yeah, yeah. You don't see that tree over there? <laughs> all right. Yeah. We can, uh, you, you can add it. Okay, see. There we go. Clear, 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 clear Creek. See the bridge down there, of course. So Wallace would have gotten here to this ground overlooking Clear Creek, and uh, this is where he stops. And of course, he's going to uh, send his cavalry forward. In fact, there is Confederate cavalry on the other side. That later in 1901, when he comes back here and says, "Yes, this is uh, this is where I stopped. This is Owl Creek. This is this is where I got to. I tried to tell you that." And Reed says, "This ain't Owl Creek. This is this is Clear Creek." Oops. And um, and there's some Confederates around. They locate them and they say, "Yeah, I was here then." And we watched you across the creek, and we wondered whether you were going to continue on or, or exactly what. So there were Confederates on the other side. But this is as far as Wallace gets. Probably a little bit farther forward, I'll show you. Let's walk up into the woods here, and I'll show you another trace of the old road, which, uh, like me, you like these old roads. Yeah. I 
a day ahead of time and pull this out for <laughs> The now trace. Yeah. Of course they they straighten the modern road. We got everybody up. Everybody's uh, coming. Yeah. Is Michelle coming Michelle in? Or? Way, way back okay. Uh, of course, you wouldn't have had the view shed that we had then. It would have looked something more, you know, closely confined now. So I'm guessing, you know, somewhere, we're still on the pretty flat ground right here. Somewhere right in this area, I'm guessing, is where Wallace got and, you know, stopped and, and let's take a break. Let's let our cavalry go forward, stack arms in the, in the middle of the road and all that. And so Wallace, uh, at one point they talk about they find him sitting on a log on the side of the road, you know, and, and to them, he's, they're thinking to these staff officers that are arriving from Grant, they're thinking, come on, guy, we're, we're getting our rear ends licked here on, on Shiloh, and you're just sitting on a log and, you know, dawdling around. And, uh, of course, he's been marching. He's uh, making pretty good time. This is like mm -hmm. 2, 2.30 or so. How far have we come? Right. Walking, hours. I mean, we've been we've been a good ways. Um, so Wallace is here, and this is where Ra Rowley, R O W L E Y, uh, comes to him here, and you know, where's General Wallace and head of the column and all that. Finds him here, and uh, this is where he tells him, uh, uh, you know, basically, what are you doing? Where are you going? And Wallace says, Well, I've got orders to go to the right of the armies. I'm going down to Sherman's right, Shallow Church. Riley says, good grief, don't you know that the army's been pushed back and there's a chance that we're going to be pushed into the river? We may not even live through this thing. And Wallace, by his own account, kind of turns pale and, and basically says, I was, I was shaken, you know, by this news. And later on, years later, when it's safe to do so, he'll say, you know, I was bold and I was going to go on and get in the Confederate rear and all that. But, um, you know, I don't think he even thought of that. Uh, at the time. In fact, this, this is pretty big news. Uh, Wallace's account, and I think Rowley uh, says something about this too, is that he, he got here and he asked Wallace what he's doing, you know, and he's, he's going to Shallow Church, and Rowley actually takes him and says, step aside with me, step, step over here, and kind of whispers this to him, you know, don't you know that we're about to be defeated? And uh, it's here that Wallace, of course, makes that decision to uh, go back and find a crossover road that will get him to the river road to get to Pittsburgh Landing within Union lines, of course. He also makes the decision to counter march, as we've already talked about, to put his own 11th Indiana and 8th Missouri and uh, what's the other one, 24th Indiana, I believe, um, 23rd Indiana maybe, in, uh, in the front. And that, that of course, takes time. So uh, Wallace will counter march here. Now, I think what we'll do, just to give you a view of spacing and all that, just for kicks, instead of taking the counter march now, what we'll do is just drive on down to this barbecue place that we keep talking about, and uh, we'll turn around there, but that will be at Owl Creek. Have any of you been out east of, west of Shiloh, Owl Creek bottom and, and all that? You know basically where we're, we're talking about. Uh, we'll go down there and turn around, and that'll show you how far Wallace actually was. And, you know, certainly he couldn't have, have continued all that. Uh, so we'll go down there and just turn around and then come right back by here. And you'll notice where we are here. And that's where we'll pick up the counter march. And we'll go, go right on back. And what we're going to do is go back to Adamsville just like we did. Uh, we'll go over to the, to the old uh, uh, Shallow Road that Whittlesey would have marched out. Uh, and then we're going to go right back actually out toward Blanton Road on the Shun Pike where we parked. And it's from there that we'll pick up then the, the crossover road. And we'll have to probably figure out some kind of system. We can't stop at every place where we enter the crossover road and get off the crossover road and so on. Um, uh, trying to think how we do this. I've got cell phones you can talk about. Well, cell phones. Maybe call each vehicle or something. Probably what we'll do is, uh, is I'll just kind of stop the column where we enter the crossover road and then we'll follow it and then when I stop again the column you'll know that we're it, it'll be a big 90 degree turn to the left you'll know that the the crossover road will continue on to our right front so let's let's do it like that when we stop the first time we're entering uh, the crossover road as it corresponds with modern roads um, and then when we stop the second time won't get out or anything but when we stop the second time that's when we're exiting 
uh, the crossover road. And then as we go um, on around, there are places that I could show you it, but it uh, again we can't stop at every place where we kind of we, we kind of meander, kind of like the Natchez Trace. If y'all travel down the Natchez Trace, you know you'll see old trace and and so on. And we we kind of weave in and out of it a little bit. And the folks in my vehicle, of course, I'll I'll show it to you, but. Uh, um, but just know that's the basic kind of route uh, of the crossover road. In fact, when we when we kind of pick it up again, I'll I'll stop again. Uh, once we get through the golf course and all that, when I stop again, we'll kind of kind of pick it up. All that clears mud. You're that. saying around this area where they started the uh, counter march? Where they where they turn the column around and start the counter march? Right yes. This area. Right here on overlooking Clear okay. Creek there. Cool. Yeah. And Wallace wrote his autobiography or it came out after he was here when he realized that he was wrong, but he didn't correct he it. He did not correct it in his autobiography. Yeah. yeah and um, it's one of those things, the story, the, the, when the truth becomes, the legend becomes truth, print the legend, whatever, or liberty of violence, you know. Uh, it's, it's a better story for Wallace to say, hey, I could have gone on and won this thing if they had just let me, but. You know, that idiot Grant gave me orders to go yeah. back, you know, so I had to do as I was told. Like, he's never yeah. disobeyed orders anywhere else. He was he was uh, pretty famous for that. But, um, you know, it makes a good story, and no, he doesn't, doesn't correct it in his autobiography. Which leads you to believe, you know, maybe other things in his autobiography aren't aren't quite the gospel truth. In fact, one of the things he says uh, in that autobiography, he says he got word uh, on like the third, fourth, fifth, or something like that, he had spies out, and he knew that the Confederates were going to attack at Pittsburgh Landing, and he sent word to Grant. And Grant just disregarded it, you know. And how much stock to put in that, I don't don't really know. Well, Wiley Sword actually, you know, Wiley Sword had a huge collection of, of uh, manuscript material, and he found a little bit of stuff dealing with some spies that Wallace had, and so on. So it doesn't come completely out of the blue. Uh, but there's never been really a smoking gun, you know, to corroborate that, that Wallace actually knew it and whether he, you know, he, he couldn't produce the, the message that he sent to Grant, you know, that, hey, you're about to be attacked on the morning of the 6th or, or something like that. So there, there's no smoking gun. And, you know, for better or worse, if, um, you know, the little boy cries wolf all the time, you're not going to believe him when there really is a wolf. And Wallace tells all these big tales, and I don't know when to believe him and not. You know, it's, it's hard thing for historians to to figure out. So. All right, any other questions? Okay, let's go. We're going to about face the counter march. Yeah, we're, we're, yeah uh, uh, we're counter march to be historic here. We're going to counter march. <laughs> 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 here yeah. uh, that I was trying to, to point out and I think what we'll do we can make the loop around but I think we'll turn around and go back you can see Shiloh from there uh, in fact when you come across highway 22 I pointed out to my vehicle up on the, the high ground on the left you can see that high ground and in fact it's grown up a lot now and you can't really get a good view shed but you can see across Snake Creek used to when you were up there 15, 20 years ago, you could actually see the tower, the communication tower mm -hmm. at the maintenance compound at the visitor center, Shiloh, to get a real good view of, you know, how far we still are. And so we're still four or five miles from Shiloh mm -hmm. right at now. At night, um, all them little houses, what they have, like street lights or anything, you can see you their can, You their can see them from through. Highway 22, mm -hmm. yeah. So what we'll do is turn around and go back, and when we get to those areas, I'll slow down, and you can look back to your right rear and and see the valley of Snake Creek and then Shiloh uh, to the to the far extent down there. All right, this is basically what I want to show you. Uh, this is the route of the, uh, of the river road. We're back on the river road now, so it's really going back there. And you can see where it's going around the river. And you can see where it's going right on down the of uh, the road right here. Really good, this just right here. That, uh, you can see, you can see it real good right there. Now, if you continue on down in there, uh, which we did, of course, on our, our hike, you'll get to two creeks. Number one, you'll get to a channeled out Snake Creek, which is called Snake Creek Canal. Mm -hmm. If you look at it on your phone, maps, or, or anything like that, um, that's nothing historic. You just have to cross it. And uh, we had a boat position there and all to, to do it. You can go through this gate right here and, and go down. Very low ground. I 
you know, ran across snakes and all that. They don't call it Snake Creek for nothing down in there. Um, <laughs> then you go across the field, and that's when you get to the real Snake Creek at the junction of Owl Creek and Snake Creek. Of course, Snake Creek continues on out, and we've crossed it two or three times. Owl Creek will form the perimeter of, of the battlefield, and we'll go to where, you know, we turn around at the barbecue place there. So, um, that's where they'll come together and that's where the bridge is that uh, that Wallace will cross. So Wallace will continue down this area and uh, we'll dive off into the into the low ground here. This is where water is still over the road at this point. Uh, not over the bridge, they elevate the bridge a little bit, but it's still over the road and, and his troops have to march through this. Uh, it's somewhere in this general area that other staff officers from Grant arrive. You know, Grant is getting really impatient by this time. He keeps telling all of his troops, okay, um, you know, hold on just a little bit longer. Wallace is on the way. Wallace will be here. Wallace is on the way. And he used that to, you know, build up morale and, and all that. Well, we know Wallace is on, on the way, but he's taking, you know, the, the scenic Round tour, off. basically, <laughs> uh, to get there. But um, all through the afternoon, he keeps sending these staff officers. After he sends Riley, um, and of course, Riley, I think it's Riley that gets back and says, well, Wallace... Uh, uh, won't move without written orders. No, I think it's Baxter that gets back and says he won't move without written orders. And so he sends Riley and, and Riley uh, says, you know, they said you wouldn't move without written orders. And Wallace said, well, I have moved. You know, that, that is obviously not true because I have, I have moved. I'm on the march. Uh, so Riley gets back and, and uh, or maybe Riley stays with me. I, I forget now. Anyway, uh, he sends two more. Uh, John Rollins, his chief of staff, or not chief of staff, um, uh, Webster's his chief of staff, but his, his main guy, you all know John Rollins, his kind of conscience as he's, <laughs> as he's talked about, uh, as well as the engineer, James McPherson, James B. McPherson, who will become later on the Corps Commander and, and all of that. Um, they get to somewhere along this point and they find Wallace stalled again. And it just, I mean, it's just terrible time. Every time a staff officer comes along, <laughs> Wallace is, just happens to be stopped. Now, again, you have seen the distance that we have traveled. Yeah. He ain't fooling around. But every time a Grant staff officer arrives, it, they're they're stacked arms and they're just they're just taking a breather, breather, break. Um, so uh, this is when Rollins and there's a great letter in the Library of Congress. Um, I think in the McPherson papers. I forget exactly which which one it is. Uh, maybe it's Wallace papers. Uh, well, I think it is the Wallace papers because Wallace is just is talking about that it's at this point that uh, Rawlins and Wallace get in a heated shouting match. Uh, Rawlins is saying, "Get up, get going, you blankety blank." You know, he was <laughs> Rawlins apparently was a pretty good cursor. Uh, uh, you know, could could use those words to to effect, and um, and so he and Wallace apparently are right in the middle of the road shouting at each other, you know, about what's going on. McPherson is a little more temperamental and less temperamental and, and does things uh, a little bit different. And he, he doesn't get in a shouting match, but he recommends Wallace, uh, General Wallace, he called him, of course, he's a lieutenant colonel here. He says, why don't you move your artillery to the side of the road and leave the artillery and let's just move on with the infantry. That might help move things along a little faster. So Wallace says, yeah, that's a pretty good idea. Let's do that. Uh, so the infantry dives off into this valley, not knowing what they're going to find on the other side, because after all, the last word Wallace had got was what? We're being pushed in the river, and we don't know if the whole army's pushed in the river yet or not. And so I believe it's the 24th Indiana. I'd have to look, but it's Smith's brigade, of course, his favorite. Uh, this moving forward um, to the to the front, and one of them leaves an account. It's uh, it's interesting that uh, he talks about we didn't know what we would find on the other side, so we sent out skirmishers and all that. And rather than being met with a hail of bullets, we were met with cheers because uh -huh. they'd been told that the Confederates hold the high ground on the other side. You know, they won't have to fight their way in. That's why Wallace wants his best brigade, as he thinks it is, um, at the at the front. But they're met with cheers. But another staff officer says. Um, Basically, at this point, uh, it's 7 o'clock or so in the evening, and things are cutting loose, you know. Chalmers is trying to attack across Dill Branch, and the gunboats and everything is just... And then it just dies off at sunset. And, uh, and that's what they're marching into. And I think as one of the staff officers says, we, we turned to the west and the sun sank to set. And the day was over, and Wallace had not been any help whatsoever that day. Uh, had he marched from Crump's, I mean, we took basically from here to Crump's Landing. Had he marched straight from there, he could have done this in, what, 
two hours or so, but it took seven to do the, the whole thing. Can we fault Wallace? I don't think we can. I'm not a, a Wallace apology maker or anything, but I think it's, it's hard to fault him. I think he was just absolutely pure miscommunication. But the truth is Wallace had not been any help that day, and they will later fault him, Perry, that you know he got a bunch of guys killed. And I think that's wishful thinking. Um, I'm not sure Wallace's division would have made really that that much difference at this point may have um, it certainly makes a little bit of difference in terms of morale because Grant Tips keeps telling people you know hey Wallace is coming hold on hold what you got because Wallace will be here any minute um, of course he, he wasn't so that will set the stage for um, Wallace to take position during the night what we'll do after lunch, I think, well, I don't have any idea what time it is. Did we miss lunch, Mona? No, it's not. No, lunch, lunch. lunch. Just <laughs> kitchen closed. No, it's not. Okay. Hey, yeah, we're right on time. It's, it's noon. Um, we'll go eat lunch at the visitor center, give you, Perry can give us the, the details and so on, or Mona, or how you want to do it, and how long you want to take and so on. But what we'll start in after lunch then, uh, we will come out to Wallace's bivouac position, and we'll walk that. And probably what we'll do to continue to tie it to the morning activities here in the march is probably walk down to the Snake Creek Bridge. How many of you have never been down to the Snake Creek Bridge? Okay, the vast majority of you then. So, so we will walk down to the Snake Creek Bridge um, and see it's just, you know, right through the woods there, what, half a mile or maybe a little Not bit more than, than that. But we'll come in the opposite direction and we'll see where Wallace continues to, to move in, where he, he takes his bivouac position, <coughs> and then we'll start with the fighting uh, out on the on the second day and continue it on uh, on from there. Any questions here? Yeah, where does Stacy fall in? <laughs> Who? Stacy, I heard when you guys were on the old five hike that he did a header into the creek. <laughs> that, that uh, where did you hear that from? <laughs> <laughs> and then come back to the high ground. Before we do that though, let me say just two or three things. Um, number one, Mona, thank you. That was a wonderful yeah. lunch. Everybody Ooh, give Mona yeah. a round. Yay! Oh, that, was, that was wonderful. Thank you for that. While we're on the subject of thanks, how many of you are veterans? Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Today, of course, is Veterans Day, and I personally thank you and our country as a whole, obviously, on the day that we set aside to honor you. Uh, we thank you as, as well. Uh, turning to Lou Wallace now, did you notice we started about 8 o'clock this morning, right? And we got back to the visitor center at, at 12. That's four hours. It took us four hours in vehicles to do basically his route. It only took him three more hours on foot to do all of that that we did. Do you yeah, see kind of the... Do what? They won't wait for me. <laughs> Why won't they wait for me? Do you see the distances involved in all of that? Mm -hmm. At the time, I think the idea that he was just fiddling around is 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 long out the out the window um, by this point. Okay, when Wallace marches in, of course, he does so because he is countermarched. He marches in with his lead brigade, the Smith's brigade then Thayer, then Whittlesey. When they arrive on the field about 7 p.m. and later as they get into position and so on, they will still be in that order. In fact, we're gonna walk over to Smith's position tablet here, and then we'll go see Thayer's, and then we'll see Whittlesey's and, um, and look at their positions on the way down to the Snake Creek Bridge so that we go do that. If we did it really in chronological order, we go down and see the bridge and then walk all the way back up here and then go back down there and start, you know, but there's no need in that. So we'll just see it kind of as uh, as we go here. So they'll maintain this formation across Tillman Branch and we'll talk about that as we as we start, as we cross Tillman Branch. But you can see the valley here and of course when we get out on the road you'll see more of the valley of Tillman Branch. Artillery with them that he brings from Crump's Landing including Thompson's battery here uh, uh, that we'll, we'll detail a little bit as, uh, as we go on as well. So let's go start, let's see Smith's position and we'll move on toward the bridge. <coughs> This is the left flank of Wallace's position once they get in here. Of course, it says the brigade right here about 7 p.m. Uh, Big wife in line along Savannah Road at 5.30 a.m. on the 7th. Uh, Farm and regiment to move 
forward to, to Jones Field. So 24th Indiana, 11th Indiana, 8th Missouri. This is why they're in the lead, particularly the 18th, 8th, uh, 11th Indiana and um, 8th Missouri. This is the same brigade that made that counterattack. You remember when we were last, last year? Uh, when the line has been pushed back, they bring Smith's brigade forward, the Zouavs, and uh, they're the ones that start the counterattack there and, uh, and drive the, the Confederates back. So Smith's brigade here. Let's go on. We'll see Thayer and, uh, and Whittlesey. I can't. Oh, Sent from Nebraska. Later they're mounted actually in the war. He was a Vicksburg. There, yeah. It's there's there's approach there's where the tunnel path. is and, oh, okay. and all that, yeah. Uh -huh, there's a tour stop there. Yep, that's John Thayer. Uh -huh. And there is a tank. There's a guy in your round table in Denver that portrays Thayer, is there not? Isn't there? Yes. Yeah. Uh, there is uh, somebody. There is also one in the Seattle Civil War round table that portrays Thayer. Wow. Of all places, Seattle, you know, so. Uh, what? Here, Lou Wallace's 3rd Division, Thayer 2nd Brigade. Again, they are in the middle brigade, so when Smith takes the position, you know we're not far from the road right there, uh, takes that position, then Thayer here, and then Little C will be next in line. We'll, we'll see it. You see some other monuments and so on. You see that 66 Illinois monument. It's uh, the sharpshooters that will be holding uh, the bluff here over the Snake Creek Bridge and told to hold it because there may be Confederates coming this way, and especially when you start hearing a ruckus and troops moving. Well, they've outflanked us, you know, they're, they're coming in. So they're as scared as, um, as I believe it's Alvin Hovey's 24th Indiana in the, in the lead coming this direction, and each of them think there's enemy on the other side, you know, and then they figure out, okay, this is Wallace finally getting here. Grant said they're coming all day, and, and uh, finally, Finally, they're here. Let's walk over the little piece of gas. Let me go through the woods in here. Uh, Wallace's division. Let me pitch up a little bit. Brings Thompson's battery, Thurber's battery. We're going down to uh, we hit the road right here. The little piece. Have you ever been to? Brigade says the same thing as all the rest of them do. The brigade arrived upon the field soon after dark. Actually, they said about seven o'clock. This is the tail end brigade. Mm -hmm. Ed, you're talking about being the fifth of, or sixth company. Did you like the field we took you through there specifically for all the stuff? Yeah, eat, eat my dust. <laughs> <your dog>. uh, <laughs> but that's uh, this is a little bit later, of course, because uh, they are the tail end. It takes them a little while to, to get on in here. Bivouac along the Savannah Road, 5:30 a.m. We'll talk about that. Uh, when we start the next day. Of course, they're a little bit behind. If you noticed on Thayer and, um, and Whittlesey here, they're utilizing the reverse slope to, to rest their men on, uh, on their arms. Thurber, of course, is a little bit farther forward. And Thurber and, and Thompson both will take uh, Pond's brigade under fire the next morning at daylight, uh, especially dealing with Ketchum's battery. Uh, that is attached to Pond's Brigade across Tillman Branch. We'll talk about that later as well. This is the, the River Road, same old, uh, um, same old River Road, Hamburg Savannah Road that we've been on a lot of the day. Um, this is all parkland, of course. This was also known as what, Nora? Is there any nickname? 
You never heard that? Lover's Lane. No. <laughs> Apparently the kid. You never heard that? Uh, the kids would come down in here and, and um, this is where they would yeah, play for season. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> play solid there. <laughs> I just don't put mobile on the <laughs> Now this is over Snake Creek, of course, and if you look at this junction right here, that was the original confluence. That's the right word. Good yeah. word. Where, where the, the, I remember we were Black Powder training one day, and, and one of the leaders, all standing around a group, he's asking everybody okay, and said, everybody copacetic? God said, no, I'm Presbyterian. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway um, I forget what word, confluence. That's, that's, that's where the, the Snake Creek and Owl Creek come together, right here. And uh, you don't see a whole lot of water flowing through Snake Creek now, obviously, because it's been canaled. And that other canal that I talked about is just to our, our your right over there. And, um, and that's going to carry most of the water through Snake Creek and where we crossed it earlier today a couple of times and, and all of that. Uh, so you don't see a whole lot of water, so Owl Creek today is bigger. However, Owl Creek is a tributary of Snake Creek and runs into Snake Creek here. So as Snake Creek comes up that gap, uh, Owl Creek would have continued here and they, they joined together. And of course the bridge is right here. So this is the bridge that was underwater up until I believe April the 4th. And for that reason, Wallace is bound and determined to use the shun pike. Uh, and even though the bridge may not be underwater, and you can you can tell just looking here, we're a little higher than uh, than the outline area, you know. So the rest of it may have been underwater uh, even on the sixth, but uh, the bridge was was uh, passable at that point. And so where we were at the bottom of the bluff just a little bit ago, it's not far through there. They would come right on through and come across this bridge and go onto the high ground. I think you're seeing a little bit in terms of the timing and space issues as well. Uh, just because Wallace crosses the bridge here, uh, gets onto what we consider the battlefield proper, he's still got a ways to go till he gets to the high ground up there. Um, so you can, you can see still distances involved in how Wallace was moving pretty doggone fast to, to get you know into position here by uh, 7, 8, 9, whatever o'clock. So. Pretty big, uh, pretty good uh, accomplishment there. Any questions on the uh, Snake Creek Bridge here? So this part right here, is that Owl Creek? That is Owl and Snake Creek. And Snake Yeah, that's that's those two together. The the creek is flowing that direction. It's flowing that way. Yes. Right? In fact, it makes that big bend up to the north, and where we crossed it on Highway 22 okay. is is downstream. Um, gotcha. Owl Creek is coming from the southwest come in this direction. Snake Creek is coming from really the, the north, uh, basically, and joining up here and then together they go to the Tennessee River. Okay. Any other questions? All right, now, from here, of course, we'll follow route, Wallace's route back in. We'll get to the high ground and then we'll start his day two operations there. So, I hate to bring you all the way down here and say turn around and let's walk back, but it's a pretty cool place to, to come down here. And see. Yeah, we went to know you down down here. <laughs> <laughs> we all right. Gonna, we're gonna get the you know, bridge repaired. Well, he's got a big old pad on here. Oh yeah. It's a big old part of that. Or anything? Okay. Speak now or forever hold your feet. Where we're going, we can't haul you out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, good, I'm good for another half mile. All right. Uh, at daylight on the morning of April the 7th, Wallace will, of course, look across and uh, peer across the ravine of Tillman Branch, which we are 
you can't really see it, but we're peering across mm. it now. Um, bear in mind, he's never seen this before. So if he doesn't reach this point until dark the night before, all he has to go on is what Sherman tells him, what others tell him, and, and so on. Actually, Grant never comes here uh, to talk to Wallace. There's a little bit of something already going on that night. Uh, the next morning, right as they're getting ready to jump off, I believe Grant and Wallace meet. Um, but Wallace, for the first time, gets a, a view of what is in the front, and uh, he has to deal with, uh, with whatever's there. Now, it just so happens that the only Confederate brigade that is online and contesting the advance the next morning is on Wallace's front. That's Preston Pond's Louisiana Brigade with Ketchum's battery in tow. Now they're a little bit farther to the east in Jonesville. We'll see that position in, um, in just a little bit. So as daylight appears, the cannonading starts, Thurber's battery, Thompson's battery begins to, to shell back and forth with, with, uh, with Ketchum's battery. And so Wallace has a decision to make. Do I storm across Tillman Branch? which by all accounts is going to be difficult, and by all accounts it was difficult when he, when he finally goes. Same thing with Buell crossing Deal Branch. And I have often contended that had the Confederate Army contested the crossing of Tillman and Deal, they may, and we don't know this, but potentially, they certainly could have delayed the Union advance, because it takes Wallace and Buell and everybody else about three hours to get across these ravines without even being you know, contested. Uh, unopposed, yeah. Uh, if the Confederates had, had opposed them, uh, you know, could they have delayed Grant and Buell and Wallace uh, long enough to, to make them think this ain't worth it? Let's just let's just hold our defensive lines and um, and let them batter their heads uh, against us. Well, that doesn't happen, of course, except in Pond's case. And Wallace is smart. This is the first time of one, two, three times. We'll see all three. Uh, that Wallace will use maneuver rather than frontal assault. And this is where Wallace gets blamed a lot of times for not having heavy casualties like all the other divisions did and, and so on. Uh, but when Wallace will move out, what he'll do instead of just frontal assaulting across Tillman's branch against Pond's brigade, and what he doesn't know is that there's not really much to that. Probably had he gone straight up the gut, he could have just, just pushed them aside because they're not real interested in being there anyway. Uh, but he doesn't know that. He doesn't know what kind of, of uh, uh, defense he'll run into there. So what he does, he decides to maneuver, and he brings each of his brigades over in this area, and he will cross on the left flank. Pond is facing this direction. He will cross and outflank Pond's uh, brigade on the high ground across Tillman Branch in Jonesville, and we'll come out and we'll, we'll flank that position. So what Wallace is doing is he's moving his brigades over here, and he forms them in echelon. Y'all know what echelon is, kind of one behind each other, Caddy step, caddy corners, you know, step to the side. So he forms his three brigades in echelon and he moves across Tillman Branch just like we're going to do. He's going to break out into a field over there called Glover Field. I dare say few of you have ever been to Glover Field. Mona probably has, but um, uh, it's not one of those fields that doesn't have a tour stop and most people don't even know it's there. And fewer people that even know it's there get to it. Uh, but we'll see Glover Field and he will, he will shift around the Confederate flank, and I'll show you as we come out the, the Confederate tablet there uh, that he outflanks. So this is this is part number one. We're going to see this over and over and over. Three different times today, and we'll walk each of those lines, uh, that Wallace will outflank the enemy position and, uh, and will do it by maneuver, which is one of those principles of war, of course, uh, rather than just frontal assault right up the gut and getting a bunch of casualties and a bunch of glory in the, in the process. So let's attack the uh, assault Thank <laughs> you. 
about coming up even unopposed uh, yeah. 550 above sea level did you have to check what we're down there we won't wait <laughs> it's a uh, that was afterwards on, a, on the map pretty substantial hill obviously and had the confederates contested this is mm -hmm. my point they could have potentially changed the narrative of the battle shot but obviously they don't still takes wallace a little while to get across here and he's not able to of course they just their mere appearance on their flank uh sends the confederates back um and he's not able to enter jones Hill until about 9 a.m which he moves out, you know, the first firing so on 5.30 or so, he moves out about 6 or a little after. And uh, so it's about three hours it takes him to get three brigades across that and uh, end up on this high ground. Let's go through the fifth. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So why didn't he put a line? Well, he doesn't have enough men. He's only got, okay, so. I think, three regiments, okay. those three Louisiana regiments. Because the Crescent Regiment and the 38th Tennessee have been detached mm -hmm. and are no longer with him. So okay. he's got the 16th, 18th, and what, the Orleans Battalion, I think, um, Orleans he Guard. Have enough to stretch this no, far. absolutely not. And you're still taking cannon fire from that direction. So his focus is, is that direction. But once you get into Glover Field, they see you, and that's when they're going to they're gonna take off. Um, and you'll be able to see that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> this is Glover Field. Across Tillman Break, you saw how difficult it was. You can see where we were. See Thompson's battery across Tillman Branch there. See the Indiana Monument, the gun there. Uh, that is Thompson's battery. We went right behind that. Uh, we came out into that field to see Smith's tablet right off the bat, right where we made the picture. In fact, you may can see the, uh, the big park sign where we made our our pictures, just right right behind that. Uh, so that gives you a little reference point as to where we are and and so on. Of course, uh, Wallace is going to congregate his brigades farther to the west, put them in echelon, come diagonally through Glover Field, just like we did, pop out just about here, facing something like this direction, and you look for Pond's tablet. See the, the uh, uh, campsite tablet over there? Look just this side of that, just right past the fence. Do you see that red tablet? It, it's, it's turned to where you can't really see it very good. That is Pond's Brigade Tablet. Now, if you've learned anything about Shiloh, you should know that when you're standing reading a tablet, you're facing the direction the unit was facing. So if that's Pond's Tablet and it's facing this direction, and Wallace is coming out like you are, perpendicular to me, what has he done? He, he has flanked now flanked the Confederate line, and Pond's Brigade goes lickety split back <laughs> to the rear. Uh, yeah, not only Pond's Brigade, but up in the woods there just a little bit, you'll find a tablet for Ketchum's battery, Ketchum's uh, Alabama battery, and they will take off as well. Of course, they're taking frontal fire from these two batteries as well as others, uh, and uh, and they're outflanked and they they move forward. So, we're moving up. More danger across the road out here than when Wallace's division trying to. Uh, 
this Highway 22 is, is uh, completely new. From about Shaw's Gift Shop, where it used to be, uh, to the the um, Crescent Field area was historic. Road. To my knowledge, nothing was was down through here. This is totally new. Well, here comes some more cars. Let's get across the best we can. Go. Got you. Came to this place 5 p.m. April 6th, bivouacked here, Sunday night. Uh, the ride at Oglesby's headquarters, which is the uh, tablet or the uh, pyramid cannonballs up there. Uh, the left toward Owl Creek, so the right here, left toward that direction. Um, they occupied this position, they scoot over a little bit until 9 a.m. April 7th. Why until 9 a.m.? What's happening about 9 a.m.? Wallace begins to shuffle through Glover Field there, and of course, uh, Pond's Brigade takes off. Now, the next Confederate resistance won't be until you get to the other side of Jones Field up there, and that will be um, the hodgepodge of Confederate lines that stretches all the way across the battlefield that they have managed to get in line by 9, 9.30, 10 a.m. or so. So let's move on up this, uh, this first line. Wallace's position. You know by now also that the Oval Cavalry represents the second page. Who used to? Uh, the Oval Cavalry. 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 The O